Hello yeah, guys, Alan here. Welcome back to my workshop. In this uh, video I tackle putting a seal kit into a hydraulic floor jack, something I've never done before. So this is very much not an instructional video, it's just how I did it. And the end result wasn't completely what I'd hoped for, so uh, <laughs> don't take this as a, a how to do it. This uh, project had its genesis some weeks ago and you might have seen a short of me messing around with wheel bearings on my trailer. And that's when I discovered that the hydraulic jack was no longer um, holding its end up, shall we say. Um, anyway, it took me uh, quite a while to get pull it apart and then get the seals and all the rest of it. So through the course of this video, you'll probably notice me wearing several different shirts. Well, that's just the way things go sometimes. Anyway, enough talking, let's get to it. So the lighting's a bit challenging at the moment, but hopefully you'll be able to see that even when I pump this guy up, it won't stay pumped up. It, uh, it just doesn't hold the uh, hold the, the lift. It lifts up all right, but then it leaks down. And tightening this bar up doesn't make any difference. So I've got to pull it apart and find out uh, why it's leaking down. Okay, so we've got this beastie up on the uh, bench. Um, I've never had one of these apart before. Uh, I don't think there's uh, necessarily any reason to completely pull it apart. It lifted all right, but it just wouldn't hold the lift. So thinking about that, the valve that releases the uh, the lift is uh, operated by this guy. So I think I'm going to start by pulling that out and uh, seeing what we can see. Maybe it's a dead end, but uh, I'll start there rather than just diving in and pulling everything apart. But first I'd say cleanliness is next to godliness, so let's see if we can clean things up a bit around here. All right. Now I've <clears throat> I haven't got a a parts list specifically for this jack, but I've looked to one for something that looks a bit similar. And I think if we just undo that, we'll start there. I think that's got it. Okay, it looks like we're off to the races now. Think got it? Yep. Right, so what do we got in here? We got something that swivels, and that thing obviously is what turns the valve. Right, let's fish that out and see what's uh, underneath it. Okay, so the bit that sticks out the bottom of this. Uh, a release valve is um, has a flat on one side which made me think it was meant to turn that but the flat in fact is to hold this so that when you turn the piece on the top this bit goes uh, up and or well, in its installed position up and down so that is meant to go in there to push to make the seal uh, against the uh, the lift pressure and then um, when you un undo that that thread there retracts this pin and allows that valve to come up so to get that valve out to inspect it it isn't an unscrewing operation it's a pull it out somehow so that's the direction I have to explore so I spent a lot of time wrestling with this but uh, didn't get it sorted but fortunately for me, my friend Mark, who by the way co-starred in the Fixing the Milling Machine video, uh, dropped by and had a look and he worked out that there was a, a seal ring on the top that needed to be levered out and then it all fell apart. So that's what we did. But as it turned out, there wasn't any problem with that valve and uh, I clearly needed to put a seal kit in the jack. So that's what I decided to do. So for my first try at uh, getting this uh, jack opened up for open heart surgery, uh, I tried to use a 18 inch um, adjustable spanner on the top there but um, <laughs> it resisted all of my efforts but the, the bigger issue was that when I was pulling on the spanner it was trying to turn flip the thing over in the vise I couldn't hold it tightly enough and because the amount of force involved I just wasn't happy so I decided to make a, a jig up to hold this thing so it couldn't dick around when I was putting all that force on it and this is what I came up with 
So these are just uh, joining plates from wooden fence rails just welded onto this bit of tube. Oh, now it's starting to rain, I dare say you can hear that. So, apologies. Doesn't have to be done wickedly tight, but we'll make sure this one is tight. <clears throat> so now I can get a, I mean, the best chance I'm going to get using this thing anyway. Oh, that's still, that's still ridiculously tight and I'm not happy putting that much force on with this open ender. So I think my next move is going to be to make a, this is, how big is this? Uh, it's about 53 millimeters because uh, there's a bit of a t um, casting draft on there. So if I want a 53 millimeter socket, well, I haven't got one of those and God knows how much one it costs, so I'm going to have to make something. So, plan is to um, cut a hexagonal hole in this piece of plate and weld a handle on it, and it should be good to go. So, that's the next thing. And there should be a link at the top of the screen to the video where I made that hole in the steel plate. So my original idea for getting the top of this thing was to make a ring spanner, basically, hex hole, and weld a handle on this and off we go. And uh, I was going to, uh, I had this just as a piece of scrap with a couple of plates on it. The idea was so that I could put that in there and clamp this whole lot in the vise so this couldn't mess around. And I might still do that, but it occurred to me, well hang on, there's another way I could do this which might work, save myself a bit of trouble. Um, I'll put that in the vise. Now I don't need a handle for that. I better put the. Okay, I better put this in upside down with the handle on there. Let's give that a try. All right. Let's see how this works. I'm going to move the camera to a safe distance just in case. So we've got more control. So I just had another idea. As long as I've got this uh, set up like that, I thought a bit of shock and awe might uh, help. So let's give that a go. Look at that. Looks like it's done the business. Unthreading from I'm threading from the bottom, is it? Okay. I'm gonna unthread from wherever it likes. Right, but there's bound to be some residual oil, so I better get to a, a better place for the continuing with the disassembly. But you can see it's certainly unthreading. Okay, so let's continue with pulling this thing apart. Obviously I had drained the oil before I started best I could. Alright, let's see what we got here. This bit should push out the other side I'm guessing. Alan. 
that's dismantled it but not in the way I'd hoped let's hope that didn't damage any part of the piston I guess we'll find out yes there's an o-ring around the top of that a thread in that top piece I, I don't know actually whether this top piece is meant to come out of here or not now whether it's sealed with an o-ring I rather got the impression yes it is it, need, it does need to come out all right well we'll have to do that oh that's a bit nasty just there I know what that's all about I didn't have to clean that up though I don't know Mm, nasty burr there. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out. That's done from a, a Stilson wrench or something similar when, they, when this was assembled and they wanted to wind that into this piece. So that's what's going on there. Right, let's see if we can get this apart. Slippery hands are not helping. hit myself in the chops with that. <laughs> that would have been nice. Now, make sure I know which way this up, which way up that went. Yes, okay. And a couple of O-rings, one inside there and one around there. Let's get this uh, thing back under control to strip it down. Damaging this little screen thing here. That's right, there's a replacement one in the kit. There's any oil going to come pouring out of there. Let's get ready for it just in case. A little bit. back out of the cradle Rubber washer. And there's a screw, a screw at the bottom of this hole. Possibly a pressure relief valve, safety valve. I don't know quite what that is. Without a little um, machine shoulder on the end, like a like a little dog point. What else have we got here? No, it's a spring. There we go. There's a, a loose piece down there as well. Let's see whether that wants to come out. Yep. So I would say that uh, is indeed the safety overload thing. That'll be a a pressure relief if you try and pump it too hard. What else have we got? There's a ball in there. This thing's meant to come out. There we go. There we go. Let's 
so that plate comes out and there's a ball in there there it is and another plastic washer there we go Still some loose bits in there. I think we need to get this. Need to get this out. I don't know how tight that's going to be. So what's behind this door? Quite a long thread. Uh -huh, another dog point on the end. Oh, we want to come pour in. Oh, a ball, two balls. That's interesting. Two balls just came out. So these two balls were behind the um, hexagon headed plug. I have to make sure they stay together, I think, so I don't get confused with that other ball bearing. Alright, now we've got another seal there, have we? Here it is. Oh, was a one of those clear plastic or nylon y things and then a seal and then presumably that was an o-ring originally being squished into some other sort of shape now get rid of this oil before it goes somewhere I don't want it to and I'll screw to that I think that rag soaked up as much as it's going to all right now let's have a bit of a look at what we've got. There is a little bit of scoring on the outside of that. I noticed that before I disassembled it. And a few dings and things, possibly from when I dropped it. But I don't know that they are terribly important. This is doing the main thing. There is a seal around the top, but um, I'm not too worried about those. Now getting this off now, I have to see how to do that. I think what I might do, it feels darn hard. Well, it, this jack's, I don't know, 25 years old or something. So I think this has gone really, I might uh, try warming it up and see if that makes it easier to get it off. So I'm gonna warm this seal up and see if that makes it any easier to get off. Let's hope it's not some sort of heat shrink tubing. That certainly softened it. Right. That's that one off. Right, and there's a, a nylon spacer ring underneath that. And then this guy. Yeah, so I think it's time for a proper clean up and uh, inspection before reassembly with the new seals. The piston, piston's in good shape, there's no uh, obvious wear or problems with that. This piece we've spoken about, I might just pop them in there for now. I wonder if these two smaller balls are the same size. Right, well, the smaller one that came out from behind the hexagon headed cap is 6.36 and the other one's the same size, so both of the smaller ones are the same size, so I don't need to worry about working out which one's which. And that's good. Right, <clears throat> that's got it all stripped down. Clean up time, then reassembly. Okay, well it's time to start uh, putting it all back together, put in the new seal kit. The first issue though is that this seal kit was uh, supplied with the note that it isn't the correct one, but it should be alright. So that's a bit of a worry, isn't it? Anyway, it's the only game in town, so that's what we're going with. So I've uh, cleaned all this lot up, 
um, checked the pieces out. They seem to be, uh, I'm not seeing any obvious dramas. So, uh, I think we'll open this packet up and um, get started. It is uh, likely to be a bit of a, a mix and match though. Because some of the pieces in here don't look uh, quite, uh, quite right. But we'll see how we go. The main point is that the, uh, the main seal um, looks right. Now I have never pulled a hydraulic jack apart before, or reassembled one, so I'm bound to make a few errors. Um, well, we've got to try to learn. So the kit included a new uh, metal ring for the top of the piston and a nylon backing ring to go behind the seal. So in deciding uh, which, uh, whether to reuse the old ones or use the new ones, so I got the micrometer out and checked the, uh, the thickness of these pieces. Mm. I'm inclined then to use the old thicker one and try and get it together with all the thickest pieces and see if it fits. If it doesn't, I'll come back from that. Okay, we've got a, got a bit of pigment, so it's uh, a bit of oil on this thing and see if it helps to get it installed. Now I've got to make sure I get it on the right way around too, don't I? That's an interesting point. I think it's going to be... Yes, and it's got to be, has to be that way around. Yes. All right, let's get a bit of oil on it. Let's see how much trouble this is going to cause me. Ah, oh, right. Yes, that's quite satisfactory. I believe that seal is now in the correct position. It's always a good sign when they will rotate. It doesn't flop about. But I'm pretty sure, in fact I'm, I am sure, that that has um, properly gone under the end of the, uh, the rod and settled into the recess. So that piece is good. Put him to one side for a moment. Sure about the assembly sequence here. So you might as well try and get him straight into the into here, I guess. I think there's any reason not to. So we get a bit of oil around there. A bit more around here. And there wasn't any great big spring or anything underneath it, so. going in. Oh, all right, well I guess that's in. Now <laughs> if I do anything else about backwards it's going to be through sheer ignorance. There's no manual that came with this lot. I'm just having to, to guess how to do it. So, there's a new seal ring to go in there, which looks like that one. And there's also that. What's that for? Oh, that was the old one. Confuse yourself, Alan. Sorry, that's, that's the new one which I chose not to use. That's right. So, I think we'll put this in there. Get 
this one a little bit oily too. So get this one a little bit oily. Put him in there. That's going to be. Oh no, that's good in. It's all right. Okay. Now maybe next is to um, get the seal ring on there and then get this can on. So we've got two, two of these. A bit of oil again. I'm going to start off with you. And another one to go on here. Seems fine so far. Now there's a little piece I don't want to forget about, this little guy here. So um, I put this little screen in. Was there any trick to getting that in there? Not sure what makes it stay there. Gently push it in, I guess. It's as solid as it was before, so I think that um, I'll have a go at getting this on now. So let's see if we can. Now, where was that supposed to be? Um, that has to have been in the machine like that, so this needs to be on top. So I've got to swing it round, go and put this in a vice and turn that round a bit. Right, I think we've got that on with the correct orientation. Okay, well when I stopped for dinner last night I think I was all set to uh, put this cap on, so that's what we'll do first. resume with that. I've already got the outer o-ring there and the inner o-ring there. We'll just oil these up a little bit. What I've got in the oil can here is hydraulic oil. No, I'm not using ordinary old uh, oil. Come on, there we go. And I'll wipe around the inside as well. Let's put a bit of a squirt there. Oops. I'll put a little bit of oil on the. I'll put oil on the threads. Oh, right. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing in. I'm going to get my spanner. This works out quite well, this guy. Mm. So I'm going to put that in the vise and um, put some controlled force on it. I'll be back. Okay, well that, uh, that's got that done. I just um, wound it up to take out the sack so it's just snugged up. I haven't tried to do it up tight yet. So uh, let's try and get the rest of this done. 
Again, I don't know there's any particular order that's important here, so I think I might put this uh, piston in next. I'll put a bit of oil on him. Oops. It'd be nice to get some down inside there a little bit too. On those seal rings. Alright. That bit done. Now the thing that came out of there was that. And it has that seal and it has I believe to be that seal there. It's going to be a tight fit by the look of it. That's definitely a snug fit on there. Alright, so that's got that sorted, got the gasket on there. So if I dare trust my memory, what goes in that hole first is this uh, small ball, which is a quarter inch diameter. Followed by the larger one. Followed by the plug. That's ready to be tightened up. So moving on to the next ones, um, here we had this guy followed by the spring followed by that, so I'll we'll we'll drop him in, oops, I want you going in there, that's the wrong spot All right. and the spring and that thing how do we know if it's all well, I suppose that has to align. So, it's just contacted the spring at that point, so I'll give it five whole turns arbitrarily. Half, one, and a half, two, and a half, Three. That's actually fairly deep down the hole now, so I think we'll stop at stop at three turns. I'm guessing that um, if I haven't done it tightly enough, the jack won't lift its full load. In which case, I'll better take this plug out and adjust it some more. But I think it's probably better to undershoot rather than overshoot. But as I've said several times already, perhaps so I'm no expert on these things, so we'll see. So then we've got a plug to go in there so I can pull that out at any point in the future to get access to that screw not doing anything up particularly tight at the moment and now the last bit is to get this piece back in so this had um, this had that plastic washer and there wasn't a new one of those in the kit and I don't think it matters which way up this goes but it was that way up and the one that was there was another one of those plastic ones on the top here but when I dismantled this the first time it wasn't possible to get that out without damaging it so I've made this up just as a fibre washer to uh, take its place and I guess time will tell whether that's actually okay or it isn't. 
doesn't seem to want to go in there now. It went in fine before. There we go. It's got it in. And then this piece with the, the flat on it to engage with that. What happens is when you wind the, the handle, this can't turn. That does, so it lifts this up and down. And um, this presses on the ball, this ball, this quarter inch ball, the end of that presses on that to <laughs> right, yeah, there's snakes and ladders, just trodden a snake. Okay, so I've retrieved this, uh, the ball, that's gone in, then uh, the plate, I left that, uh, that other gasket has stayed in place. In the plate, and this guy just falls in if we put it in the right way around, right? And uh, okay, so now we're ready to um, put this to, together. So, this is the bit that will screw in there, um, actually, go like that. Yes, actually, go like that, but it needs to have an o ring on there. So, let's find out which size o ring that is. Yeah, that's 15.6. That's pretty much right. And then this other one. I think this other one's a bit small. So it looks like this one gets the gig. Oh, it's going to be tight. Alright, here's on. Right. So now that should go in there. Right, that's good. Maybe that's supposed to go through further. Oh, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Now I've got a, a shoulder to do this up against, which makes sense. Now we've got a spring washer. And a nut, a locking nut, so that's going to be over to the, the vise to get that done up. So I'll just go and do that now. Okay, so that's got that assembled. And this uh, piece now, go down in there. Be ready to get tightened up. So I think we're done here with the assembly. Now I've just got to take it over to, just got to take it over to the um, uh, holding fixture that I made so I can do everything up tight and then put some oil in it and see if it works I guess. Let's get on to that. Okay so we're getting back in the uh, in the holding fixture then we'll start tightening some things up. Start here. We're doing this up against a nylon washer so it can be done fairly firm. This guy's up against um, an O-ring, so he doesn't need to be more than something like that, probably. This guy here, though, has got to be done up pretty tight. We can find a span of the right size for that. What about this guy? He's too big. I think he'll get the job done. So I'm squishing the end of this up against my fibre washer and the nylon one on the other side, so they're going to do fairly tight. <laughs> and in case you're curious, that was 11 sixteenths Whitworth. So I think the only thing left to do on the jack is actually to tighten this up. Oh, that should be pretty tight. I, mean, I 
don't know how tight that's going. I think we might uh, cool. Oh, let's go a bit more. Oh, it's a lot, lot less interested in moving now, so I think we'll call that it. <laughs> Click on the torque wrench. So this uh, homemade spanner has actually worked out really well. And I probably did myself a favour by not putting a handle on it. Okay, so I'm going to take this out of here now and uh, put it in the jack, I guess. I'm just wondering about trying to fill it up with oil a bit before I do I will, I think. Try and put some oil in while it's easy to get at. Okay, let's see how much of a mess I can make with this. Be going all right. I'll keep going. It's running back underneath the spout, though. See it's backed up a little bit there. I'll put the plug in for a moment. And I think the idea is to give it some pumps and bleed the air out. But that's going to be easier to do I think now when this is actually installed in the jack. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to put it in the install this in the jack now. And then I'll top this up with just with the oil can. Okay, so I've got this thing mostly back together again, and I've got to say it's not really a game for the faint-hearted. It's heavy, there's strong springs involved, and it's trying to take your fingers off. I found the best thing was to, well, what worked for me anyway, was having it on this uh, chair, supported on a couple of battens, and um, I didn't try and film it while I was doing it, because it's just too, you know, I need to watch what I was doing. Anyway, this bearer here supported the back end of that before the springs went on. The way I got the springs on, the return springs, and these are stiff buggers, was I made or found this hook. And I was able to pull them back with that, get them around there and then wrestle this out. Um, so that's how I managed to do that. Uh, that's the main thing, getting those bloody springs on. And you can only get them on um, when this is up. And I've got it hanging from, or I had it hanging from this, um, <clears throat> had it hanging from this to keep it up out of the way and also make sure it couldn't fall off and trap my fingers or land them anyway. So uh, I think we're good for uh, give it a test drive now. I haven't got the return spring on the handle yet. <laughs> we'll get to that. But hopefully when I take it down and stand it on the floor now, it will actually remember what it's supposed to do as a jack. Well, let's find out. things are just too heavy. I said I haven't got the return spring on here yet. None of this lot's done up tight. So I'm going to let it down to start with. My springs work. I'm 
That's going up. That's promising, isn't it? Let's try giving it 100 kilos to hold up. Not very scientific at the moment, but I'm not feeling like I'm going down. I'll get the dial gauge out in a minute and see uh, more definitively. But that's encouraging. <clears throat> Before I stripped it down, you could stand on that and feel it just go down under your own weight. So, the last part of the reassembly for this thing is to get this uh, spring in place. Its job is to keep the handle in an upright position and stop it flopping about. But as you can see, it's a pretty hefty spring, and somehow or other, I'm going to get that through there. The other end's got to be up there, so I'm not sure yet exactly how I'm going to do that. Well, let's have a good go. Okay, so just to have a closer look at how this thing's set up, so we've got a spigot here and a threaded piece that uh, threads into this. So what I'm going to try first, I think, is uh, with this, uh, put this in place, try to get that on it, get this... Um, started or possibly all the way well it's well and truly started and then try and lever the back part of this spring back this way so I think that's what we're going to try to do not sure exactly how yet let's start off with a screwdriver and see what happens also the reason I've got it up on the welding table is I'm thinking I should be able to tie it down so I can uh, pull against it. So I'll do that now. Next I'll get some blocks so I can uh, pull against. Okay, so I've got a, a couple of uh, blocks clamped to the table here. So I can pull against, pull this way without the jack going anywhere. I want to get that up above there to start with. All right. So that I can get this guy in there. I'm hoping. Okay. Right. Okay. Now let's see if I can pull this back. It's going to have to go. It's going to have to be held way over there. Right. That's. That's a promising start. And get this around there. Keep going. And now we've got to get this over that way. With my third hand, I'd like to get that past there. Perhaps I need to have change my angle of attack here oh, that's going to help getting that over like that so now oh there we go oh, wasn't as, wasn't quite as fearsome as I thought it would be Okay, so I can tighten these bolts up now. No point going stupidly tight on these because they're, oops, do it the other way, Alan. They're being done up against uh, spring washers. Uh, right. Now I probably won't be able to operate that by hand now that spring's in there. So we'll slip the handle back in. Do its retaining bolt up. That all seems to be pretty good. And the spring's taking the weight of the handle. Perfect. So, last piece of the puzzle is to put this uh, 
thing in, split pin if you're English, cotter pin I believe if you're American. Um, there's a spigot on the end of the piston here which goes into this block and, with a, and it has a hole through it. So this is just a retaining thing so that um, this piece can't come adrift from here. I mean these springs hold it tightly attached uh, anyway but um, I guess it's belts and broses. Anyway so that was the last piece of assembly. I've checked all the bolts so now it's uh, over to a, a test lift and I'll put a dial gauge on it. Okay so this is the test setup. I've positioned the jack under one end of my travelling gantry. I'm guessing it's going to have at least, oh I don't know, 100 kilos maybe. Certainly a worthwhile sort of load. I've got the uh, dial gauge um, fixed to the side of the jack. Uh, so as we start to lift it up we'll see the um, dial gauge start to register. So perhaps we'll zoom in on that. Okay, so we'll start to a bit of a lift. I feel some pressure coming on now. And it's leaking down a bit, isn't it? So that's a bit disappointing and a bit short of the result I was hoping for. Well, interestingly, with the jack at a different position, the leak down rate's a bit different. Um, let's pull right back here. Um, the um, gantry thing is, oh, I don't know, 200 mil off the ground, something like that. So the jack's probably at about three quarters of its lift height, something along those lines. And at that rate, um, at that position, the leak down rate is very slow. So uh, I think it's uh, restored it to a position where it can actually do useful work, whereas previously it was quite useless. But uh, anyway, I think I'll just put, put it to one side for a moment and uh, use it when the circumstances mean it's a safe thing to do and monitor it and uh, see how we go. Okay, well I'm calling this floor jack project done now. It would be nice if it didn't leak down at all, but that wasn't the result I got. But the leak down is really slow, so um, I think it's still going to be a usable uh, piece of kit. I mean, I would never get under a vehicle depending on the jack anyway. So it's certainly, um, the bleed down rate is so slow, it certainly won't be a problem lifting a car up and putting the, sh the jack stands under it. So it would have been nice to get a perfect result, but that wasn't the way it was. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And even if you didn't, <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, and see you on the next one.